right, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here at Smirking Gun Reviews, back to talk more comics, and, well, I still haven't received last week's comics, but I did finally uh, get some answers from Grime Cracker Comics, and this week's comics arrived on time, so we do get to talk about the, this week's comics, so I still don't know what happened to Marauders. I will eventually, <laughs> but... If the picture behind you and you clicked on the video, you know, we're going to be talking about Excalibur number one, which I know is not everybody's, I, I don't hear anybody really talking about this in like their most uh, excited about books for the Dawn of X, but I'm a massive Gambit fan, massive, okay, I'm even cosplaying as him uh, next time I go to a convention. And my Outer world character is named Remy LeBeau. He's got, you know, the raspberry colored eyes in the hair. And I try to talk like him in the game. So, yeah. I'm, I've been excited about Excalibur. But the re other reason I'm excited about Excalibur is because it's about magic. And it's about apocalypse. And it's about the other world. And I, I, it was a book that when I was younger, I really didn't read that much. If I picked it up, it was because I was following Kurt Wagner around, you know. I wanted to see more Nightcrawler. And so, Tini, and Tini Howard, okay, she's writing this book, and she, she's an acquired taste. Uh, I, myself, didn't mind the Thanos run that she did that much, but... Let's jump in. I, I wanted to give it a shot. Like, I definitely want to give it a shot. Because while I am a huge Gambit fan and I love Rogue and I think Apocalypse is interesting, I'm a little on the fence about Jubilee and Richter. Um, I like Psylocke. Um, I think that what they're doing with her, how she's separated now from uh, her other, who, I, I, it escapes me right now who uh, the other is. Uh, but anyway, here are the variants that came out for this. Uh, this is the Bagley cover. Try to get it so it's not uh, getting too reflective out here. But here's the Bagley Every Mutant cover. It's got Apocalypse. It's got Omega Red. It's got Warlock. It's got a whole bunch of people in here. If you want to get real close, you got Archangel, Havoc. And so there's that one. Uh, then we got the Mike Del Mundo Jubilee Chews Bubblegum one, which I just think is fun. I think that's fun exclusive flavor actually I think it's really cool like look at how Gambit's like got gum on his shoe let's see if we can get that better on there <laughs> and then we got like the, uh, the the design variant the Hickman design variant which I, I do I like these I think these are interesting they look like manuals like computer manuals and then I didn't get every single one. I didn't. I wasn't able to get my hands on every variant, which is fine. But I did get the coup de gras to me. And this one, I gotta be careful with, because I got this variant from the original Excalibur artist, the Hidden Gem variant. I dig this quite a bit. So anyway. Let's jump into Excalibur number one. We'll be talking off of my regular issue. And again, yeah, okay, look, before we get into this, full spoilers, I dig this. I dig this quite a bit. And in fact, I dig it a lot more than I thought I would. Because even though I was excited about it, I was also prepared that this might, I might hate this. But I dig it, because it makes me think of the original Excalibur book. Like anybody that was wondering, what's this going to be about? Well, it kind of feels like we're jumping right back into the old books. But we have this long thing, and it's I believe this is Apocalypse talking. And hence the A at the top. Oh, and by the way, he likes to be called some name that derived from the name Apocalypse. It's speaking, I don't know how to, they don't like, clearly it's a hard name to say. But I'm just going to call him A. Maybe I should do like, <laughs> I don't know. And it's, I, I didn't know if it was from Apocalypse at first because I wasn't paying attention to these. But it's him clearly talking in the third person uh, about himself. 
It says, the day of Charles Xavier's world-changing announcement, several of the world's most magical users, mag powerful magic users, also received a transmission as Apocalypse introduced himself to his fellow sorcerers. So kind of like there, there was just narration, but it's really, I think it's Apocalypse is talking. Talking about himself. I, Apocalypse, and talking to other magic people. Which means that he talked to fellow, so he sent out a message, a magical message. So people like Doctor Strange, they know about this. They know about Apocalypse, too. So, like, Stephen Strange, while he's out being a surgeon again, I guess, this has got to give him pause. You know? Oh, got, like, a hair on my mouth or something. But, okay, it goes on to say, <laughs> that'll be really interesting. Paradigms have shifted. With any shift, things fall between. People believe the unbelievable. Power in in days of old, we held magic high. The wise and strange were sought for everything from sickness to prayer to make the crops lush and the water flow. The witches of humankind have been relegated to curiosities. Doctors heal your sick. Scientists tend your crops. For you, magic is a dying thing. The prophecies of our rise have come and gone. We have saved you as promised, and we will earn back our history from you. So basically, I think he's talking about like magic's coming back. Um, on our land, meaning Kokoa, we will write the songs and histories that can only be made in luxury. On our land, we will believe in the things you had the luxury to conceive of when you lived in caves. Yeah, this is definitely apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> On our land, we will make and raise mutant children who have only been raised in peril, in secret, in war, and in anguish. For millennia, I have believed that these trials made us strong. Well, that's definitely apocalypse now, right? And that's great. Like, okay, so he says, for millennia, I believe that these trials made us strong. Talking about the whole survival of the fittest thing with mutants and things. No longer must we believe this lie. Our strength is absolute. Our magic is not in its autumn. It is the young God born again with a sword in hand, and it is the domain of the superior. So it makes me think about what we've been talking about, what a lot of people have been suggesting about what's Apocalypse's role. In all this thinking like how's you know I think you know like okay maybe he's up to more than this okay of course he probably is but on the surface level it seems to be like he's not interested anymore in these kind of trials maybe he's thinking further something bigger like if I give up like I said a long uh, a while back when we were talking about house and powers of X what does the guy do when he gets what he wants can he you know just sit back and like enjoy himself you know in retirement almost or in a role of maintaining what they have or do you try to find something new to conquer to test to see test the limits of to see what's out there and I really that's what I was saying um, if you go back to some of my other videos I think you'll see it there and I believe that this is at least a part of that because in this book they, they cover that and we get this interesting part with the other world or Morgan Le Fay, uh, who, uh, she's not one of my favorite characters, so it's about the only thing about this, because she's just got that eye above everybody else, like, she's that, if you read uh, the recent, like, Weapon H books, which I, I didn't really care for, <laughs> I don't know why I kept doing it, I kept reading it, um, it's because it's a whole green, I guess, but Morgan Le Fay was there, and she's just one of those characters that's just always... She's she's like the the queen uh, the wicked witch in Snow White to me, where it's just all about her and her magic and her being powerful and, and any other you know any kind of uh, claim to that power even if she doesn't even if nobody's really challenging her power she will see it as a challenge of power and so there's this gate that they find and she sticks her dude. <laughs> she sticks her friend her, her friend's head in it like hey why don't you freaking look in there and find out what's going on <laughs> so i do like her craziness of just like drowning the guy yeah these are the you know like really let's no wonder so many people have tried to take her power from her and that's how we begin and i like that also i did not know that trinary was part of this team okay so richter's not in this book which is fine by me because yeah but i think he's associated with the uh, jubilee I don't know, maybe he's the... No, dude, Richter's gay, right? And he's like with Shatterstar, or was with Shatterstar. Anyway, let's not get too far off the topic. 
But we get the like the Braddock family reunion, you know, well not really reunion, but they're talking. Betsy's getting preparing to go to Krakoa. And let me tell you, man, there's so much in this book. And, you know, it's just, you know, typical brother sister thing. And they bring up Jamie, their brother, who's, you know, his cheese has slid off his cracker so many times that um you know, they, they bring up that, which foreshadowing. So she goes to Krakoa where they're having what turns out to be like well, the wording in here kind of leaves it up. So in this scene, they're all having this party. They're dancing and everything. And there's a very interesting thing that Apocalypse says that tells you what this, what he at least thinks this kind of party is. He says, the children that come of tonight's unions will be the most powerful generations of, generation of mutants the world has ever seen. So yeah, this is a sex party. <laughs> this is where everybody's going to get down and start uh, like law number three, make more mutants. I also like that right here, right away, because here's here's he he is sitting in there and is you know looking above at everybody, and who's eyeballing him from the side, like checking out like what's he up to? There's my boy Gambit already looking at like what's this dude up to? Because while all mutants are welcome doesn't mean that they forget everything that happened that's going to be like one of the hardest parts about all this is how do you move on when these people have constantly tried to kill you or have killed you or killed friends of yours i mean now people can come back sure but does that mean you forget all this stuff so he's got trinary here and he is trying to open up it's the Grove of Theoretical Gates, Apocalypse's personal study. I love that, the Grove of Theoretical Gates. So he's experimenting with where you can go with the gates of Krakoa. And he's like, Cypher and Sage and I tried running diagnosis for hours. We've got nothing. No one's been able to get through it. He's talking about the gate that they opened at the beginning of this book. That's the gate that she's trying to understand. That's what Morgan Le Fay is trying to see. It's like, somebody's trying to come through and take my power, right? So he can't, but you, we can't get through. Some magic is blocking him. So it's the other world. Everything is like this kind of like a, put, it, everybody's pushing against it like a magnet, repelling each other. You know, like when you put them against each other, just, you just keep, get, can't get through. Um, and he's like, well, you know, that is your trouble, your science. Some things are di not diagnosed, they're discovered. And so they try to get through, and here experimenting with it and it cracks and Apocalypse is like yeah we're gonna need a champion to break it and he's already like looking over his shoulder like he knows what's going on he knows what to do and we get the the from the Krakon Krakon grimoires <laughs> they're already using like magical terms and like a stuff like that it's great and it says where it is a magical certainty po posited in the texts of nearly every occult paradigm that as above so below the energetic surge delivered by the opening of the Krakoan gates and the rise of mutant kind creates an inverse, a magical mirror, wherein, so below, as above. With the creation of the new paradigm comes the opposing line, which, when placed at right angles, form the X of creation. The power created by the paradigm shift can be harnessed only by those who have a familiarity with power and a gener generative link to the X, symbol of highest creation, homo superior. The X has no above, no below. The X, uh, yeah, the X is the generative force of higher creation, a duality of the simple dimensions of mortal delineations of above and below. The magic circle has been abolished as a weakness requiring the hands of many magi and points on a line. The X as superior requires only four. So they're basically saying like when people do magic and they have that circle that they make and it takes a lot of people Well mutants on the other hand that can do this. They only need four people which we shoot over to this place uh, The fair green hall the moors of North Yorkshire where there's these magicians these Witches or warlocks or whatever you want to call them. They're doing their own spell. There's something happening there and they're getting a message from uh, the other world from Morgan Le Fay and she basically is like hey man I gave you this magical power and now somebody's trying over there is trying to get here and take my power and I need you guys to figure it out otherwise you're never getting your magic back from me and it doesn't matter what you do you got to do it or you're all effed in the A so <laughs> they, they, she calls them a witch breed 
So she sends them to like to do what must be done. We cut back to the party where Silek has this moment of awkwardness with her other that got separated that's here. Um, the girl, the top three panels where they're kind of looking at each other. Jubilee, who's got a baby. Uh, I forgot about that. That like baby is still a baby. Uh, Shogo is his name, I guess. Uh, there's also a mimosa tree. Or where is the mimosa tree? I don't know if that's actually a thing or if she just thinks it is. It's probably a thing. Um, but this guy named Fabio comes by. And I'm not too familiar with him. He wants to go by Egg now. Well, it's about her brother. And I thought, oh, it's about Brian. Wrong. So they got around to bringing Jamie Braddock back. <laughs> which, uh, if you don't know who Jamie Braddock is, he's Looney Tunes, okay? He's the, you know, the black sheep, if you want to call it that. He's a, a real piece of work. And he's already just defiled the egg chamber, this sterile environment for the eggs for when people come back. He's just lounging in his own juices, in his own embryonic sack. Very Jamie Braddock. It's really great. And that's one of the things, again, why I love this, is they're going all the way back to the real, like, this is Excalibur Return. Um... And he's like, can you please do something? He won't listen to any of us. These pods are supposed to remain sterile, and he's doing really gross stuff in there. Uh, so he's, you know, he's back, and he's happy to see his sister. Not too happy to, uh, to see his brother, Captain Britain. But he's also not exhibiting, like, sound, uh, too many weird tendencies yet. He's just being himself. Um, and she kind of tells him, like, look, man, I'm going to bring him to you. I'm going to bring Brian to you, and we're going to deal with this. Just stop messing around, man. This is like... he and Jamie doesn't quite understand yet, you know, after just being back, the rules. Like, he's just kind of back going, well, I'm just going to be me again. I'm back. I'm alive. Yay! And So, uh, 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 Psylocke eventually... She doesn't want to be called Psylocke, by the way. Betsy, for heaven's sake. Um, goes to Apocalypse. And he's telling her that a Krakoan gate seems to be open to us from the other world, not to it. And it's about trying to... Uh, he wants her to go to get Captain Breton who can go with that amulet that he has in between, like their, their guardian of other world, in case you don't know this. For people that are new to Excalibur, which I imagine quite a few. And in fact, let's just get this out of the way. Because I said I haven't really read that much Excalibur, I'm kind of new to it too. I am... This is kind of like a refresher for me because it's been a long time. So she goes back to see Captain Britain who's on his way to the other world because he's been summoned there. So she uh, gets her costume. They've got this, uh, what did she call it? Krakoan costume technology. Uh, and, and also one of the other things in this is they just like the back and forth that Tinny Howard uses here with the brother and sister conversation. I really like that. Like, um, when they're talking about what's going on in Krakoa, she's like, "That's why I'm here. Something is wrong with Otherworld. I was encouraged to come here. Come, I was encouraged to come fetch you by Apocalypse. I think you're heading into a trap." And he's like, "Pardon me. You were having a drink at your party with Apocalypse. We weren't having a drink. He's a mutant too. He's welcome there. Anyway, I'm going with you. What? Well, well, that's new. Krakoan costume technology. Did you pick that up before? Nito. <laughs> so, she goes with him." And they're immediately set upon by Morgan Le Fay, who is just like, hey, what's up? Uh, guess what? You're my champion, and your sister is a sacrifice. And this is, you know, like, you, she's already just ready. Like, we're going to kill her. We're going to kill everybody. And we're going to go through We're going to find everybody that's doing this, and we're going to kill them, too. So, great. It's, we've already found our, not great in, like, a bad way, but, like, great. This is, like, our first... Uh, to me, since I haven't read Marauders, our first real conflict going on, and it's the magic world trying to now, like, s Morgan Le Fay's power is sensing an assault on hers, and so we've got our first major conflict. Uh, Rogue and Gambit are together talking about what's going on here, and I like how she brings up about the third law and how she's, you know, kind of on the fence about that third law and making more children because of course with her powers you know why would you know she's of course gonna think about why should I bring more mutants in even though this is a peaceful world she's had it so rough 
and her powers are so tough to deal with that the thought of bringing a kid in that could have the same kind of life as hers, even though Krakoa is this peaceful place, it's just too close yet, it's still too new, and she hasn't seen the results of what could happen in a peaceful mutant society. So I absolutely get it. This tracks pretty well. So they get there, and, uh, <laughs> you know, Remy is just like, yeah, like, I, I do not like this. Like, he's, you ever done anything for that guy? He looks down his nose at you the whole time you're doing it. Like, he knows he's making you do something nasty. Like a cat watching you scoop the litter box. I love that. I love that. Because you need a guy to keep Apocalypse in check, except, you know, like, even though Gambit could be, you know, if, if they ever let his powers off the chain again. He's in a yeah, super Omega level mutant, okay? But in his current iteration, he's no match for Apocalypse, okay? It's it's just, I like watching, he's like the Han Solo. Like, he's going to be the one that's, like, defending everybody and, like, talking crap. So they go to, uh, they get Jubilee along, too, because they, they, she was a witness. She was one of the last people to talk to Betsy. And so she, they, they, they get this like kind of hodgepodge team together. It's kind of like a team of convenience. Of like, well, Rogue needs to be able to touch the door to like try to help that. They need Betsy because of Brian. You know, Jubilee was there as a witness. Rogue's not going anywhere without Gambit. So it's that's kind of why this team's put together. And Trinary is the communicator. So I, I dig this. I like that this wasn't just specifically like, and how I heard about Tini Howard and ex asking about this job and everything. So I believe this is a really well crafted kind of idea. So they get on the other side. Morgan Le Fay gets control of Brian, and but Apocalypse is able to bridge a gap psychically to Betsy who is about to be taken out by Brian and he says you gotta you gotta close that gate so she uses her psychic sword to smack it meanwhile Rogue was touching the door at the same time when it got hit and so she ends up getting thrown back and is like Krakoa kind of attacks her but not I don't know if it's really an attack or if it's just we're gonna get more explanations but she's like wrapped up in flowers and stuff and now kind of like in a stasis situation and Morgan Le Fay, uh, she's trying to stop uh, Captain, uh, Betsy from uh, getting any further. And Brian, in his last bit of like being able to control himself, gives her the amulet and is like, look at his eyes. He's like, get, you know, he's like, please take this thing. It's your only way out. And so she takes it and, you know, Rogue's in her state, Gambit, you know, of course tries to punch Apocalypse in no avail, which is when we see Betsy come back as the new Captain Britain. We get a little epilogue here where the girl that was the running the little magic squad, this is very much it's making me think of like old X-Men books now, of the, the human that kills their like fellow, uh, you know, worshippers of Morgan Le Fay as you know she sees it as a sacrifice and she's got her own little club of magical people that she's joining the coven Akaba I don't know what that is I will look that up later and then there's this thing at the back called the invocation of the gods um, which I don't understand and I'm gonna wait for uh, smarter people <laughs> to tell me what that is so Excalibur number one uh, it was a super deep dense book there was a lot in here a lot of pages a lot of stuff this is definitely worth the cover price for $4.99 you get a, a huge story in here I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would even though it's got Gambit and Rogue and Apocalypse I love the return to a magical story I love the questioning of what's going on at Krakoa I love Rogue's take on things I'm just I'm in now if I was on the fence even though I was excited I'm definitely in now for sure if you're not, that's cool, but at least you got the information of what's going on in Excalibur number one. So, if you like this review, please hit that like button, comment, share, subscribe, all that jazz. You can find me on Twitter at reviews underscore gun if you want to talk to me about comics there or anything else. Because we do uh, more than comics here. We do movies, games, TV, everything. So, 
Uh, we were we got our comics, so I got a lot to get through. We got Dead Man Logan's final issue to talk about, amongst other things. We got Marvel Zombies Respawn. So and we got Batman Annual. So anyway, this is Robert Smirking Interviews saying keep reading comics and have a great day.